Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of Know How is brought to you by Bespoke Post, a product subscription club for men. Bespoke's monthly box of awesome keeps you up on the latest in food, drink, fashion, and more. For 20% off your first box, go to bespokepost.com slash twit. If you've got a phone, you're going to want to watch this episode, because today you'll know how to replace the glass on your touchscreen phone. Welcome to Know How, I'm Aya Zaktar, and this is Twit's how-to show. We show you a fun tech project you can do yourself. And this project is near and dear to my heart. It's about cell phones, you know, you keep them in your pocket, you hope and you pray they don't fall and die and crack, but sometimes they do. And uh, what we're gonna show you today is a nice project you can do yourself, and it's actually pretty cheap, because you can replace the glass on your smartphone pretty simply. We called in an expert to show us how to do this. Let's go into the workshop and see how to actually get the screen cleaned up. So we've managed to make our way to the basement. We're here with Burke and you've had a loss to your phone. Your Galaxy S3 had an accident, did it? Yes, I dropped it uh, two weeks after I got it on the concrete and it put a nice big crack all the way across. So we've got two cracks actually. We have yes. one that goes oh. all the way across the device and one on the bottom. Yes. I dropped it again the same later that day. Uh, wow, upstairs. so I, I guess you didn't uh, learn your lesson that time, but uh, uh, now no. we have a Samsung Galaxy S3 with a broken cracked piece of glass. But when you're using the device, right, the digitizer works, you can swipe Yeah, it through. works fine. Just the Gorilla Glass, it's broken, not the actual screen, not the sensor. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace the actual piece of glass that's covering this. But to do that, we have to remove it. And as you can see, there's no like screws on this or anything. It's not like we can just pop it off. Uh, what are our yeah. materials? Lists? How are we going to get this piece of glass off of this phone? Well, oh, first of all, I should mention the reason why we're doing this is because this part only costs, you know, like 10 bucks. Otherwise, you have to buy a new screen assembly, which is about $200. Okay, that and, point, and you might that, as well get another phone. Right, and that's because the screen is attached to the Gorilla Glass. So in this case, your screen's not broken, the digitizer's not broken. It's just that piece of glass right. that's covering it. Right. So that's glued on, right? It is glued on. All and right. so what we're going to do is we're going to heat it up with the heat gun. So you've got a heat gun now. I've seen videos online. People have done this with, with hair dryers, hair that takes a long time. And we're gonna take, we're gonna take measurements using this little uh, infrared or laser. I'm not sure what kind, this, uh, this temperature gauge or thermometer as they thermometer. call it. So you just point it at something and it'll tell you how hot something is. So if we wanna point it at Burke, right. he's approximately 82.5 degrees Fahrenheit. We've got a replacement screen. I see you have some tools to try to pry that screen away from the actual phone. Yeah, so this tool is fantastic. It's stainless steel. Uh, it's got a beveled edge. It's it's made actually for getting into stuff like like the iPod. It's from iFixit. Basically, we're going to use this to to get in here and pry it open. Um, I also like when I do anything like this. I I use these. Pl plastic uh, razor blades and this there's a couple of different kinds there's a blue kind which don't have as sharp of an edge mm -hmm. these are very 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 sharp edge it's it's like a very good casting of an actual razor blade so this is called a mini scraper we're gonna have yeah. links by the way at twit.tv slash kh so if you want to find these tools we'll have links to that yep. also we got this information from xda developers forum yep. fantastic resource for all this kinds of stuff yep. and of course by the way if you're going to try this at home be aware that you might destroy your phone so back it up we've shown you how to do that in a previous episode of know how yep. but uh yeah if for some reason burke decides to put the heat gun on there long enough to melt the logic board well, I guess what? He's out of luck there. Uh, but before we start doing any of that, we you took out the battery? Or is the battery still in there? Battery's still in there. Get it out of there. It'll explode yes. when we heat it. Make sure to take your uh, card out also. I would I would actually transfer any information you have on your phone off the phone. So right, back up your stuff. Take out your battery. Take out the SIM card. Take out your micro SD card if you have one. Uh, because when we heat this thing up, we don't want any of these elements being heated up. Yeah. Oh. Supposedly, uh, we're gonna try to keep the heat around 200 degrees, and uh, we, you can go a little bit over, but that's 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 our goal. 
Before we get back to our phone, we want to thank our friends at Bespoke Post. Now, Bespoke Post is a product subscription service for men. Each month, Bespoke Post sends you an exclusive package with products ranging from gadgets to accessories and more. Go to bespokepost.com slash twit. If you sign up now, you'll receive 20% off your first month of your subscription at bespokepost.com slash twit. Now, this is a subscription club for men. They've got a team of experts that scour the world to discover the best and most unique products around. Then each month, they send a themed box of awesome to members filled with these amazing products and experiences. They also give you tips on the best ways to use them. You can view all the past boxes at bespokepost.com slash box slash past. Now, past boxes have included all kinds of things like coffee kits, cocktail sets, shaving kits, and a lot more. The cost is $45 per box with free shipping and easy returns. Now, the retail value of these boxes is always far above the monthly subscription cost. And at the beginning of each month, they let members know their limited edition selection and they can opt out and not be charged for that month's box if they don't want it. It also makes a great gift for any man in your life. A one month gift is $45, three months is $135, and half a year is $270. If you're having a really hard time shopping for the guy who has everything, this is the solution. If you're interested, visit Bespoke Post at bespokepost.com slash twit. And now we're going to take a look at the featured box here. This is a box of awesome. You can see it on all over the place. Box of awesome. Let's see what's in this one. There's a card in there telling you this is the Q. You can, if you can't smell this on the recording, unfortunately, but this is phenomenal. This is stuff for your barbecue. So we've got all kinds of stuff here. We've got some scooping ketchup, which is pretty awesome. We've got artisan mustard right here. Let's see what we've got here. We've got, they've got rubs. So if you want to make steaks, if you want to make a barbecue, you want to do something awesome, you've got rubs for that. And if you really want to get flavor into your meats and chicken and whatever else you're doing, there's actual wood that you throw in your barbecue. And if you've got no idea what you're doing, there's actual instructions that come with it. So you can actually understand how to use these kits. Hmm, chipotle to a Moroccan rub. Oh, lots of spices. This is pretty awesome. The cost is $45 per month, but you can save 20% off your first box by going to bespokepost.com slash twit. Once again, that's bespokepost.com slash twit. And we thank Bespoke Post for their sponsorship of know-how. Now let's go back into the workshop and find out how to put this phone together. All right, Burke. Now, I've seen a lot of people, they took their phones, they left it on a surface, and then, and then they heated it. I've noticed you have a glove. Is this a Michael Jackson kind of thing? Yes. OK, yes. this is how you uh, work? It's a silicone glove. Uh, it's going to keep my hand from burning. Uh, I'm using this because I need to hold the phone in my hand because my heat gun is not variable heat. So I have, and I have to vary the heat by holding it farther away. Okay, now I don't endorse this method. Yes. I would be putting this on a table and I would vary it by moving my arm. Okay. But Burke, well, because he is Burke, he's going to try this. Don't try this at home unless you have a glove that can sustain a lot of heat. Yeah. We've got our goggles on, we've got a thermometer, we've got the glove. It's time to remove some glass. Let's start. Here? Yeah. 216. You're turning off the heat gun, we're gonna to try to pry off that corner because it was at around 200 degrees. You could see that that tool is doing a great job because it's very thin, 151.5, so it cooled off so, very quickly. So how, we, how about a run here? So we're gonna to start to do the edges now. Go to the edges, all right. Yeah. Physics. Now, the reason why we're doing this slowly, why we're doing this slowly is so we don't rip the glass away from the digitizer so quickly. We're not trying to rip this off because we don't want to damage the digitizer. The digitizer is the thing that actually recognizes your finger presses, taps, and swipes. So when you're doing this, you want to do this very carefully. That's why Burke isn't just taking the corner and ripping it off. You can see he's introduced a lot of air so we can keep prying this thing off. Look at that. That's working like a charm. You could see all the air being introduced right there. Yeah, you're keeping them pried apart so they, the, heat, the glue doesn't reseal what happened there because the, the glue is getting heated, so it's allowing you to remove the glass from the digitizer. So first you, were, you pried it off. How hard was it to actually pry off the screen? So to actually pry off the screen is relatively easy. 
um, you just need to be careful how you do it and not to rush yourself. You need to take your time and use even heat because if you force the screen off, it'll start to crack. Um, and what you want to do is you just want to evenly heat the, the screen so that the glue gets warm and then you're just basically creating an air pocket. So after you remove the screen, what did you do? You had, did you clean the surface? Now that I got the screen off, there, as you can see, there's some little bits of broken glass. So there's a tiny bit of adhesive over here in the corner. And so what you want to do is you need to, you need to take painter's tape. That's, that's what I'm using now is painter's tape. So you can it's, use painter's tape to, to clean off the screen because when you put that new glass on there, you don't want any dust or old things in the nothing. way. nothing. You do not want anything under there. Uh, and basically when I was putting it back on, I just sort of made sure the button was sticking through and then lined it up and then it just sort of press it on, heat it some more, press it. Let me press it to get the glue to, to stick. So you've got the screen on. We've got the digitizers working just fine. Yep, the capacitive buttons work. Everything works. Wow, okay, so so should I smash it again so you can do it again? Please don't. No. Well, how, would you recommend people do this for themselves? It seems really simple to do, and if you have the right tools, it seems like it's running just fine. Well, it is. Um, if you have good manual dexterity, yes. If I made it any worse, then I would still have to replace the, the screen anyway, the screen and the the glass so i didn't really i didn't have anything to lose if you didn't know burke had a backup phone in case this completely failed this became a project phone and that's why he was willing to try this out on know how burke thanks I, for trying this out for us no because problem. just recently i just broke and shattered my s3 screen as my phone plummeted from a roller coaster i have yet to see what it looks like yet it's being mailed to me so i get to do this myself soon right. uh now i see it's actually possible yeah. so i'll hold the thermometer the, the next time and you get to actually do <laughs> i the actually bit. get to do the work We'd like to thank Burke for actually sacrificing his phone. You know, he didn't plan on breaking his phone in the beginning, but I kind of caused the accident that broke the phone just for this episode. Okay, that's not true, but uh, it probably will happen to me. And it, in, in that ironic twist, my phone is broken. And thankfully, Burke has shown me how to fix mine once I get it back from Six Flags. If you've got questions, comments, concerns, dirty jokes, whatever you want, you can always contact us pretty much anywhere on the internet. So if you're on Google+, we have a Google Plus community. I just did a Hangout today, actually. Just an impromptu Hangout. Easiest way to find it, gplus.to slash twitkh. And there you can find over 3,600 people like you who are just coming up with great ideas. They have questions. You guys have answers together right there. It's really fantastic. A great community. I love being a part of it. There's also Twitter. Always looking for the hashtag twitkh. So if you've got an idea and you write, write it on Twitter, you can do that. If these social networks aren't your, your thing, you don't like that, you can always send us an email, knowhow at twit.tv. We check that out, we read these things, and I actually write back. So it's kind of crazy. So whatever you write, usually we'll get a response from me. And that pretty much does it for this week's episode of Know How. And now that you know how to repair your phone, go out and do it. And if it's not broken, go get a case. <laughs>